Is that it? Did I hit the button? Are we live? Oh, what's up? I think that works. Look at that. How you guys doing? So today we are going to be doing a Highlander. Uh, we're going to be doing all the sides. No windshield today. All sides in five. So we're going as dark, as dark as we can. Make sure. Oh, I have to do one more thing. One more thing. Oh, wait. No, it's all set. Remind me later. Why won't my software update? I don't know. What up? <laughs> what up? Hey, T-Town. How you doing? Warland. Ugh. Yeah, so everything is everything's pretty much set up, ready to go, minus my extra camera. And, uh, ooh, microphone. Hey, buddy. What's up, pal? Whenever somebody calls you buddy, you call them pal. And if somebody calls you pal, you call them bud. <laughs> KP, Mohammed, Brian. Uh, just embroidered, uh, embroidered some hats. Got some cool, cool hats I'm going to be making for Rick. Oh, nice. That's super cool. Congrats, man. Do you use three mil? Uh, no. One and a half or, or the ceramic that I use is a two mil. Kind of more by coincidence, coincidence than anything. It's a good one though. I like it a lot. More online tank classes for sure. What plotter would you recommend for tinting and PPF? Um, if you're gonna do PPF too, I'd suggest investing in something that's a little bit better, maybe as high as a, a graph tech. I mean, we got these workhorse plotters, they work good for vinyl or tint, so you should be able to also do paint protection film on them as well. They're just, you know, they're only built so well. They're more of a economic plotter, so if it's going to be like a, a keystone of your business, then or a cornerstone, you're going to want to use something a little bit more more robust. Shrinking nano ceramic from Geo. I noticed the shrink is super slow with a Wagner. Am I doing something wrong? Maybe get it closer. I'm used to shrinking 3M. Uh, what ceramic are you using? The Pro Nano I've noticed goes just as fast as any dyed film does, if not faster sometimes. All right. All right, what do we not do? Oh, I don't think we did anything. I don't even think we turned it on. That's right, that's what we forgot. Yeah, honestly, I'm not sure. It's the Pro Nano? Yeah, Pro Nano's a great shrinking film. Um, Used to shrinking 3M. Do you shrink from like the outside in? Kind of like the crystalline stuff? I mean, I think I need to get used to having my heat gun a little bit closer. That's probably it. Um, but Pro Nano shrinks really fast. So if you're shrinking, if the 3M that you have shrinks even faster, that's super cool. I haven't used 3M in a long time. Highlander, there can only be one. I don't think I get that reference. <laughs> All righty. So that looks good to me. Am I good? All right. Cool. All right, so we're going to get started. Like I said, we're going to be doing 
uh, 5% on all the sides of the rear on this beautiful Highlander. This one's nice. Um, what was I gonna do? Okay, first up, we're gonna we're gonna tape all the seals and stuff. Got to do this. Chainix super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Hey Matt, question about Avery near upon installing. I super. get random glue smudges. I try not to squeegee hard. Thoughts on what I'm doing Cannon. wrong? Maybe before your age. <laughs> I used to watch some old movies. We'll see. Um, Chain, Chainic, Chanic, Chanic. <laughs> Thank you so much for the five. Question about Avery and R. Upon installing it, random glue smudges. Try not to squeegee too hard. Thoughts on what I'm doing wrong. Uh, upon installing, it's either grabbing the glass um, or like when you heat it up or something. Get random glue smudges. Sometimes I'll, I'll see like a light spot when shifting it into place. Um, you know, if it's if you heard like little juts when you were trying to move the the film around. Um, Avery and R. Oh, you know what? Avery and R is a pretty. Um, a pretty grabby film that like I went from NR Pro to NR and what I noticed was just like the glue was way more aggressive I'm getting flashbacks now so that's when I first kind of stumbled into using baby shampoo and Dawn together or just using more soap because that glue does grab um, what I have noticed though is if you see a spot that looks like a little smudge or something it actually, as far as I know, will will clear up. It's one of the few things that'll just take care of itself. I don't know exactly why it does it, but it'll it'll clear itself out. Because I would see it especially along the top edges when I'm trying to get my film, when I'm trying to get my film in place. Oh yeah, I remember what I was gonna do. All right, I need to get back on track. Uh, lights were on. So let's grab the tool belt. Let's get set up. I'm uh, trying to stay ahead of things right now. So this one is super cool because he came all the way out from uh, from Kalamazoo, which is like two hours away. And then also uh, the new guy has started. He's on the other side of this wall right now helping clean some things up. So it was kind of like a little perfect storm here. <laughs> I got to catch up on some stuff. I was supposed to, I told myself I was going to have something done, ready with like the phones and I haven't, haven't done that yet. So I'm going to take care of some stuff. I had this super cool idea for a hydrophobic display too. That'll be pretty pretty simple to put together. So I'm gonna work on that. If anybody's been in the Facebook group. Um, so Saturday, um, Saturday I had a set of doors and a windshield and then I had another windshield. So like it wasn't super busy. I'm still, uh oh, hang on. Just noticed, just noticed. There we go. So Saturday, I had a set of doors and a windshield and then another windshield right after that. And I had, I had been looking into hydrophobic coatings um, for windshields and, you know, just glass. But mostly windshields. But I'm going to put it on, on everything. So I've stumbled into a couple of options. One of them is actually soon to be launched in July. I guess it's a relatively proven product. It's supposed to be a pretty substantial leap. But I'm going to talk to them more. I haven't talked to them much. But I got my hands on it. I put it on my windshield. I was doing a little test. Um, this is earlier in the morning. 
walks in for his appointment, pops back here, and then sees I'm doing the test. And I showed him the difference between the two. And this was really, really cool. So he, he walked back and, and checked it out um, right before I checked him in for his appointment. And then when I'm wrapping the car up and I was going to cash him out, he's like, hey, is there any way that I could add that to my windshield too? So that was cool. Who's the new guy? New guy, his name is Jack. I'm sure you'll see him, see him soon enough. He is, I don't know. He is not in a super happy job at the moment, looking for some different opportunities and called me at the right time. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing is really focusing on anything and everything to help streamline this place to save save some time. Um, and he's gonna be handling phone calls and orders. And then as time, cause like, obviously I, I'm not right off the bat looking for a tenor. That's what I do really well. So I need to do some things that facilitate that. And so he was calling around some different shops looking for some um, for some options and whatnot. And uh, yeah, super cool dude. Should be fun. We'll see how this goes. I charge extra for the windshield now. I found, find profit margins are slim for annoying work. 250 for most cars in ceramic. Nice job. That's awesome. That's where I'm at on uh, windshields for ceramic too. That's cool. I got a CX-9 coming in at 11, concerns? Uh, no. Wait, did I really just miss the entire door? How did I do that? Mazdas are pretty straightforward. I think the only curveball that they throw is sometimes they get kind of slim here. They don't give you much room to work with. I don't do that many Mazdas though. So it's hard for me to remember. Top three squeegee blades. Hybrid is number one. Flat out is number two. And mm, blue max slash orange crush kind of come in at, at a tie. I do have a version of the blue max though that seems to go really well. That's something else. Hybrid's my favorite. It's it's the best material. It's not two squeegees, one on each side. Like that's not why I really like it. It's just it's the best material. If they could take that same material and put it in a flat out, you know, just like in one of those regular blades. That'd be super cool. Love to see it. It's nice that it has two sides. I answered that 10 seconds before you could. Hey, you know what? I get, there's delays here. So when somebody asks a question, I get it. And then when you see my response, that's something else. Isn't the hybrid an Orange Crush and the Blue Max together? No, it's not. Durometer wise, yes, I think. But it's a completely different material. That's the thing about it. That's what I, it, it's, it's funny to tell people cause like they don't really get it until they feel one in person. And it, like the Orange Crush and the flat out, um, the, the clear crush, the, the pink clean, um, their black squeegee, all those are like, like a, so they slide really well, but when you touch them, they have this like, they're like a little rubbery where you know the, 
the Blue Max is just like a different material altogether, but the Blue Max is hard. So, and it's calling it, comparing it to the Blue Max doesn't quite even do it justice either. But when you pick up a hybrid, it's it's just different. It's a slicker, more glossy material. I can actually show you. Um, so this is an orange crush. This is somewhere past the pizza coupons. <laughs> okay, this is a used. Let me grab. Let me grab the other one. Did I sell my other one? I think I sold my other one on Saturday. Okay, these are the same. Let me get. Let me get some reflections here. See, there you go. You see how one has a matte finish to it and one has a, a glossy shine? That is not the same material. That's as good as I can show you right there. So it's got a really hyper slick feel to it. It's just, it's nice. <laughs> but the thing is, so I looked at prices. It's $20 now. Jesus Christ. Inflation, man. Uh, I got two Teslas, a Wagoneer, Silverado coming in later today. Going to listen to you in the background while I tent. Nice. A Grand Wagoneer. I haven't got one of those yet. You know, I saw the new Grand Cherokees, and I've had a handful of those. But when I first saw the Grand Cherokee, I thought that, like the new Grand Cherokee, I thought that was the rumored Grand Wagoneer. Because I was surprised. They actually made, the, they made it like longer. They added some extra windows, and it looks uh, much nicer. They did a good redesign. And then I look at a Grand Wagoneer, and obviously it's probably about the interior. But it don't look quite white as fire. This is 5%? Yes, this is 5%. We're doing that on the, on everything, except the windshield, no windshield. So many issues with the L Cherokee. Oh really? That's unfortunate. Don't they have issues with everything, though? All Chrysler stuff. <laughs> no, that's not fair. Have you tried the sledgehammer and the dehydra? Uh, no, I've might have seen. I like. I know I saw the sledgehammer uh, relatively. I think like a long time ago. But we had a little chat before. Some of the squeegees they intend uh, for you to use, like one is a cleaning one and one is an insulation one. You notice I always use one squeegee. I've tried to like use one for cleaning and one's the insulation, so like I didn't want to give a bad impression of it if I didn't use it properly that way. Because I always default to using just one squeegee for everything. It's just a habit.
This one's a little down further. I think I'm probably at a good level here. Apex 5. Oh, no, we're doing uh, C2. We're doing carbon. Carbon 5. If the tint slime and baby shampoo cost the same, which one would you choose? Um, they both have their their pros and cons. I'm I'm baby shampoo though. I'll tell you, it was like w at the time I was using Avery NR Pro, and that film with a lot of other films had a nice slide to it. The Tin Slime Ultra has stuff that kind of dries out the film, um, so it'll tack faster. And using that with one of those films, like I, I went straight to the Ultra. I hated the green. I always hated the green, but the Ultra was, was pretty nice. So, um, it was nice. The it dried, it like tacks faster, um, like dries out faster, and it also dries cleaner. Um, at least like on all the surfaces that it dries on. I really liked that. So it looked like it was it was kind of cleaner when you were using it. I really liked it. It's just too aggressive though. You know, this has gone so much better. Using a plastic knife with these blades, I've had way less issues. Weird, weird to me that that fixed it, but that fixed it. What film do you recommend for practicing and what size roll? Uh, so it depends a little on your budget. You're gonna wanna get something that will also cover back windows because shrinking is a huge part of it. So if you can afford it, get 20 or 24 inch rolls and also get 36 inch rolls. Now you can split the 36 in half and also do door windows on most cars. So like it depends on what vehicle you have to practice on, but you have some wiggle room there. You can, you can buy just 36 inch rolls if you want to. 36 or 40s, 36 will cover most sedans. So, and just get a, uh, honestly, just get a relatively inexpensive dyed film. Um, I recommend some of the basic films from Tint Depot. I have a recommendation page there with a lot of the tools and stuff that I use. They have some good budget films. If you want something that's a little bit, um, or that'll be more professional, um, but it won't break the bank, then uh, Sun Distributing has their Helios line. That I would trust on customer cars. Good film. Bam, there we go, making progress. Two doors, going to the back.
Dude, look at that. Look how much extra. So this is a 40, and I've got this much extra on the top. I always try and cut it like I don't have enough room. Kind of by mistake at this point. Mark those down. What was that? I've got an Impala and an Equinox. Couldn't find a video of tinting a newer Equinox. The newer Equinoxes are just like the older ones. There's like hardly any difference. You might be able to pull the seals on the older one. But the newer ones are really straightforward. Love to see you do one. Any, um, any small hatchback is gonna be very similar to that one. An Impala, um, Impala is like reasonably straightforward. You don't have to make the sides very wide. Same thing for the bottoms. Don't make them super wide. Not quite as easy as a Malibu, but pretty straightforward. Um, the back window just has that, uh, that third brake plate that covers the top of the glass. So you can either remove it or pull it down when you go to install the film on the back. Yeah, I, for whatever reason, like I'm, I'm actually a little surprised I haven't had an Impala. I used to do Impalas all the time, but I don't know. I just haven't seen one. They used to come in in herds. Like legitimately, we would have like a herd of Impala come through, three, four at a time, knock them all out. Same thing with like fusions. They would all like, when one person came in with a fusion, it's like, then everybody came in with the fusion. I don't know what it was. The new Audi Q5 suck. <laughs> you could, I could say that about a lot of Audis. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Why? Why did it? I don't think I can save it. Can I save it? I don't think so. I, think I just wasn't paying attention to this corner. Oh, what a bummer. We'll probably save these for a quarter window or something. I wasn't paying attention to the way I cut that side. This one's really squared off up at the top here. So I did my first cut this way and pulled it over this way and that top cut kind of angled up this, that direction. It's just a little shy. By a little shy, I mean, yeah. You roll down the window and you see a gap there, no thanks. Yeah, that. <laughs> I'm almost doing it again. See how this goes up this way? I did a new, uh, what was it? I did an A4 on stream. Yeah, they, they've gotten, the, even those, got a little bit more um, more annoying to do, unfortunately. It was not fun. So I did an A4 uh, on, that one was on stream, and I think it was with a full windshield too. Yikes, that thing just, they don't give you much space, and you've got a, uh, you've got really tight paneling. So that just makes it 
That just makes it not fun. Nobody wants to do that. Drag this over. There we go. Now we got extra on this side. a little farther down. Alligator window tint super shattered five dollars. Has anyone found a drop cloth or door protector that actually sticks? In a mobile yeah. business, there isn't really a way to use the carpet shield. Yep. Alligator, thank you so much for the five. I appreciate that. Yeah, let them know if you guys came up with anything. I think one of the the only reasonable solutions that I've seen that you could take mobile is like those um, paint drop cloth things, like the, the, the three, the blue rolls of tape with the plastic attached to them. And then you could also carry an extra roll of tape, put that to the top, then stick that painter's tape to it and then drop it down. It at least would be a pretty portable solution that would work that would work okay enough you don't stick yeah yeah just the tape by itself doesn't work <laughs> that 3m stuff it, it's just there's not enough that sticks to door panels honestly house wrap tape is probably as good of a, a tape that I found that'll reasonably stick other than that, you got to like wrap something around like the back or stick it to the, the paint with like some magnets and stuff. And then you still got to put a line of tape at the top. There just aren't, aren't many good things. Lots of things will stick to paint. Lots of things will stick to glass. They just make door panels. So nothing sticks to them. But that will scratch the car. What will scratch the car? Oh, the magnets on the paint? Yeah, like, like I'm saying, there's really no good solutions. <laughs> I would opt for the, the blue rolls of plastic. I think it was like... I would do that and I put a line of tape and then stick that to that. Or you can try and shove a trash bag. That was another thing that I tried was like, you can get like just a, like I, I was just cutting trash. Okay, it's like super janky. You use something other than trash bags, obviously, but as a test, trash bags and just trying to tuck it into sides and stuff. But it was hard to find a a place for every single door panel, but it, it helped anyways. But for simple efficiency and everything, stick something to the door panel, then stick something else to that. That's why I do this and I put the carpet shield over that because the carpet shield will not stick to every door panel, but it'll stick to this. Why, why you do, when, when has it logged me out? Cannon.
Okay, can this like look? So you log in and then it wants to do captchas. Can you go die in a fire, please? There we go. I got my chat back. No, 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 you don't, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. So, I know you can't use Carpet Shield Mobile, so you gotta use the next best thing. Let me show you, let me show you. So, um, these, these don't stick to door panels very well, but they're really portable, convenient drop cloths. So it's a roll, just to anybody that doesn't know what these are, these are rolls of plastic with tape. So when you unroll it, you stick it to a door panel, but this isn't gonna stick to the door panel. So then you have to put something else that'll actually stick to the door panel. God, this stupid. Somebody, Microsoft. They put their little pop-up in the most annoying place, so when you lightly hover your mouse over it, it does this stupid pop-up. Oh, it drives me crazy. Somebody wanna tell me how to disable that? Because I've looked and I haven't figured it out yet which is, I'm sure, their intention. Okay, so then you have to put something like Lowe's tape, tuck tape, or whatever on the panel, and then put this on top of that, and then you got your mobile solution for it. But it's, again, it's not a, it's not a perfect one. Um. Okay, so hopefully that fixed it. We'll see, but that's about as good of a of a thing that I can I can recommend. I haven't found anything better, but if somebody's got an, another idea, I'm all I'm all ears. Just things aren't supposed to stick the door panels. this just a little bit. I don't know why the Highlander did that. Highlander, why you do that? So they notched it right here. <laughs> it's like one of the goofiest little notches. So I just gotta make sure that this notches just like it should. So probably right there. And then that basically just rounds out. I think I got something wrong with my chat today because it randomly crashed on me, which it usually doesn't do that. And now I don't hear nothing.
Well, when that breaks, everything breaks. It says it's connected. Lies. All right, we'll try it again. We'll see if it works. Let's see how that goes. But yeah, hopefully that gave you some ideas. <laughs> yes, looks like it is working. Awesome. It's just now coming out of the wrong place. Oh, there we go. Okay. There. It'll be fixed. I recommend using a Steinel heat gun. I've wanted to to try them. Yeah, so I've I've wanted to uh to try them out. There was one that I was going to buy, but it's like I think it was like 400 bucks. And the thing about a heat gun is like you got Porter cables, Wagners, and like there's some other little personal preference ones there, but they're all relatively inexpensive and it's a heat gun, so they usually always burn out. It's only a matter of time. So like I'd imagine that one would last longer. But am I really gonna squeak the extra out of it, I don't know. But I definitely want to try them out. I've tried every Steinel, they're good, but they don't seem to last any longer or work any better than the Craftsman. Bang. That's no good. See, it's like, they only can pull so many watts out of the wall. And if you really want, like, a heat gun on steroids, then really you're, you're kind of jumping right into a torch. And that makes, to me, that makes more sense. So, the, I would try it, but, yeah, it hasn't been a priority for sure. The problem is picky ass clients who don't realize the small amounts of soapy water is not going to damage their car. Oh, I know. I know. You can try and explain it, but when you have to explain it, it's already a bad start. You just want a solution where it's not going to be a problem. So, um, I would have something that tapes and tucks into the seal here a little bit. And then I would just stick that uh, painter's tape plastic right on top of it. A lot of the other door panel solutions really like, you know, they wrap around, they stick to the paint uh, with magnets. And like, yeah, there's something to be said about that too. There's always potential for like that to scratch something. You can stick them to this part, the inside, but, you know, on an expensive ass car, it doesn't really matter where you stick it, probably. And then they're not going to want you to take the panel apart anyways to try and tuck it. You're not going to want to do that. So, like, nobody really, <laughs> that's the problem we've always all had. Like, so there doesn't seem to be any perfect 
solution. So it almost just has to come with a dis disclaimer. The real solution is the real solution is to pull it into a shop and then they never see it. And then they get it back and everything's nice and beautiful and tinted. That's the real solution. You gotta take away that question entirely. Yeah, there's like, there's just, you know, we're always looking for a solution to some of these things and can't make everybody happy, but he's just dealing with a different type of clientele, but I just canceled my shop because the numbers don't make sense. Whoa, what? No, why'd you do that? How much was the shop gonna cost a month? It was gonna cost 5K a month. Hmm. Plus 50k in the build out. <laughs> yeah, you do too much. <laughs> That's not even all that bad, really. Commercial stuff is just expensive. I'm sure you feel like you're paying that every month with gas prices right now, right? charging a dollar per mile for fuel. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty nuts right now. Nice and close. Damn, that sucks. Is there nowhere else to move to? I mean, commercial anything's expensive. Like this place, right? I've put some money into it. It's 
not completely dressed up even at this point. I've just been slowly adding to it as I go. But I know alligator's gonna wanna dress up the whole thing before he moves in. <laughs> They covered the retail build out, but nothing. So just the air conditioner would be 15K. Yeah. Yep. There you definitely need an air conditioner. You either find something that's already kind of decently laid out that you still gotta put it money into. It's gonna be cheaper. I mean, I didn't really think I'd say this a while ago. I, I honestly think uh, a shop's the way to go. There's just more opportunity. More opportunity and less hassle. But yeah, 5K is a little, a little steep. You need like, cause my, uh, my dad's place, he's got a 6,000 square foot building. That place, when he moved into it, was 5,500 a month. And the only way he makes that place work is with the crew. You need, you need turnover. And it's a hard thing to, uh, it's a hard thing to scale. I think a good way to start is jump into somewhere, get that ball rolling, and then move if you have to, but ideally find somewhere that could maybe be expanded to a couple other sections right next to you if you need to. 2,000 square feet for that price? <laughs> good God, man. That's, yeah, that's crazy, man. The, uh, sorry, I'm listening to some of this. This is interesting. That's why I canceled it. Prices in Central Florida are crazy. Well, it is, so, being that it's in a new space, too, that's definitely gonna make it go for a premium. I mean, when you look into all those things that it's like ideal location, like location's a huge part of it. Mine is not an ideal location, but I don't care. I actually prefer that it's not. But all that's got to make sense for you, and I run a very different business, so I get it. I just noticed, like, having space, it... Let me just smooth this out. My wife is in real estate. I get notifications for anything that pops up. Nothing is less than 3,000. 3,000 is, I think, totally fine.
But I get it. It's like opportunity cost. That's that's huge. <laughs> but that's in horrible areas. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Doesn't make sense where I'm at, so I'm readjusting. Yeah, fair enough. I hear ya. That sucks. Time to build out a new house and then just do it from home. in a stressed economy. Who's stressed? Are you stressed? I'm not stressed. Sorry, I'm trying to just finish this up here. Good God. Just gotta shave a sliver off. There was a dull spot on the blade. I should have just snapped some off. I thought that was it. current economy has me worried. Yeah, I mean, there's probably, I mean, I mean, a couple of the worst things happen, right? Cars are not, like, just, cars are not in, uh, in great supply right now, and gas prices are crazy. So those are, like, two terrible things that we have to, we have to deal with. Not fun. Not fun at all. Diversify. That's what you gotta do. But how do you diversify? So, I briefly talked about hydrophobic coatings at the beginning. Um, there's a lot of systems that, that exist. Um, but I always look for things that I can kind of slot into my current workflow that don't take much extra time to do, but have like a pretty strong wow factor. And I've always really liked hydrophobic coatings, but none of them have really seemed to last, or at least la since last I looked at it, there's a lot of them that didn't, that didn't last. So I've, I've kind of ignored the space for a while. This is what, this is, honestly, this is what happened with carbon. Um, carbon and ceramic films, like when they first came out, they were interesting, but they weren't clear, like they weren't great. And as they've improved, they've gotten a ton better and they're a lot clearer than they ever have been. And now they're, you know, for a while, they've well been worth installing. So I think hydrophobic coatings have probably been there for a little while, I just haven't paid attention. So I started peeping around, trying to figure out um, kind of what I should go with. Came across the long-term test, saw some really cool options, and uh, and I put one on my windshield, and it sold itself on Saturday already, which was super cool. It's not officially launched yet, too, either, so <laughs> that was kind of a little story there too. I don't know. I just keep digging and digging until I find stuff. And I got a really, 
cool idea, I think, at this point for an upfront display. Some people have like the little tabletop things, and that's pretty cool. And there's some months out of the year that I wanted to show it uh, on my actual car with like a, you know, a sprayer outside that you could just show on the windshield. But I'm gonna basically, I gotta buy a windshield, I gotta put it up in my showroom, and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna literally just put a sprayer up there with a drain and then show people right up there, right in the showroom. So even if it's cold and rainy out or cold and wet outside or whatever, I don't know, like winter and everything's frozen, I can still show people. See this, this right here, that's what I've been trying to line up. That little like, it's like a sudden curve that kind of splits this way. It's really unusual where this one just goes straight across. So just trying to make sure everything tucked in the side. That's why I kept going back and forth so many times. I just want to make sure I got that nice and close. That looks good. I think the Tundras and some other ones do that too, or something very similar. But yeah, it was nice. I gotta, I gotta get more info. Like I was sent uh, basically an early release kit. So I'm gonna talk to the company and see pricing and what their structure and everything's gonna be. It was super cool. Uh, it applied in 15 minutes, like, or you put it on in like five minutes, cures in 15. And then everything's good. There's no like 24 hour cure time, anything like that. So it's all super quick. Looked like it was gonna last for a long time too, based on some existing tests that I already saw. So, it's one way to start diversifying. Bigger ways obviously are, are gonna be pulling in other services and stuff like that. It requires more people and whatnot. But, I like, Hey, look at that. Mike Pops super chatted $5, morning Matt. Knocked out another ceramic windshield on 2019 Jeep Liberty. The tips are paying off. Oh, that's super cool. I always like to hear that. Who was that? Thank you so much for the five. Mike, ah, oh, Mike came out and took the class. That's awesome. Knocked out another ceramic windshield 2009 Liberty. Uh, the tips are paying off. Dude, that's super cool. Mike was showing, like, so when he came here, he, he said he was showing people the ceramic and a lot of them were just like, yeah, no brainer. They're just jumping on it. And he just didn't do windshield. And it's like, oh. Huge opportunity there. If there's people that are coming to you that are already just jumping on ceramic, yeah, do windshields. That'll be such a huge bonus for you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that, man. Oh, so the ceramic coating company, there was two I was looking at, and since you guys like to hang out here, um, uh, there's one called Sharpline, and there's another one uh, that hasn't launched. That one's called uh, NGNT. So, like, I was looking around, comparisons, whoever's got a video, and there's a guy who had probably about 40 coatings. This ranged from like Ceramic Pro to anything and pretty much everything that you've heard of. He has on these windows. And there was a, there was a handful that went toe to toe and looked pretty good with it. But 
from the test, it was just like, that one looks like a, like the best, honestly. Let me just see. And it's supposed to be launching sometime in July. And so I messaged the company, and I was like, hey, I see he's got a sample. Is there a way I could get, get, a, get, a, get a test kit? Can, can, we do, can, can I do something? Can I, do, can I get it? And they sent me one. Um, are we going to do, yeah, we probably are. Let me, let me take this off. We'll finish up with the doors first and then we'll come back to these rear quarters. I was wondering if I would do this, but I'm probably going to plot or cut them. If I ask for a kit, will I get one? I don't know. You got to message them, not me. I'm just like, I just messaged them and I was like, hey. You could tell them that I sent you over there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that'll do anything, but they'll like me more. <laughs> but yeah, I want like a super quick option where like it literally went like this. If, if I'm doing a full car, then there's time like for, so the sharp line coating takes a couple hours to cure, 24 hours to fully cure. They can drive it in a couple hours. It's supposed to be okay. But here's the thing. If I'm doing a full car or I'm doing a set of doors or I'm doing front doors and a windshield, and then it's a very spur of the moment thing. Two hours all of a sudden adds a lot of time if somebody's waiting on it. So for most situations, cars dropped off, settle it ahead of time. Okay, cool, no problem. That's fine. But in the situation that I ran into, it was literally like, oh, hey, you're wrapping up with the car. Is there any way I could do that coating too? It was a very like impulsive thing. And yeah, sure. Your windshield's already cleaned off. Let me go ahead and apply it. It'll take 15 minutes for it to cure. I'll let it sit for just a little longer to be sure, I guess. And uh, you'll be good to go. So that was really, really cool. And I, I don't know, I gotta, I know they, they do relatively well. Um, it's just figuring out what is the right price for it and what's the best way to kind of show it and slot it in with what I do. And having literally like a two second display where it's up there and I can I either have something already rain falling on it that kind of grabs your attention when you walk in the door or, you know, I take a sprayer and I'm like, hey, would you be interested in something like this? And they're like, whoa. Like it's not gonna be everybody obviously, but I think there's a, a strong chance and it fits into my workflow really, really well. Glass is already getting cleaned. Let's add it on top of it. Bippity bop. There you go. I just wanted something to be pretty maintenance free. So I tried, I know I tried the glass parency system. Um, like, this is a handful of years ago now. And it was in the winter time. So they got like booster things that they sent out. And it, like, I already needed one within three months. I just wanted something that, hey, somebody's getting their car done. The more things you have to do, the more hassle. Either you have a nice, convenient, maybe like spray bottle that you have. So when you clean the glass, you just give it a couple of spritz, boom, you're good to go. Or it just, you know, ideally just keeps working. Sounds like a good add-on. I want to replace a new service with taillight tinting, but I don't like, but I don't like doing taillights. <laughs> yeah, that's tough then if you don't like doing it. That's why I haven't done taillights. Um, I I've had a handful of inquiries. It's a good add-on for like wrap shops. Obviously, they're probably already doing it. 
like most shops, they're, if they're wrapping, they're doing taillights and stuff too. For window tinting shops, you'll get you'll get some inquiries, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, Lux is probably the most user friendly material that I've seen, and I've I've managed to do it myself. What I what I never liked about headlights and taillights was how crazy exaggerated some of those lights are. But there's there's shops that that do learn how to do them. It's just putting in a little effort to learn it. I always felt like it's kind of like learning how to wrap. So if you're going to do that, like you could do hoods, you could do roofs, like you could do a whole bunch of other stuff. Obviously, there's little tricks to learn for all of that. But if you can do taillights, then you could probably wrap a lot of things, and then you can go down that whole rabbit hole before you know it. It's like it's an entire segment of your business. But in the beginning, it's definitely like adding a <laughs> like a half tint job along with it. It's work. But yeah, the one of the shops that I attended for, they were using the glass transparency system. They had it literally like on their invoice. So they would have a sheet that the that the client fills out when they're checking in. So they would choose all their options, and then they would also have a box at the bottom that would ask them about like glass parency, like are you interested in windshield hydro hydrophobic coatings? And they had some demos up front that they would show the client. And so it's a it's a was another nice way of bringing it up, and they sold a lot of them that way. So when I was first starting the the tint studio, I like I was really interested in glass coatings, and then I talked to uh, Jason from Chicago Auto Pros and he dashed all my hopes and dreams and he was like, yeah, most of them like are the long term seem to last like seven or eight months before it really is just like they all seem to fail one way or another. So there was just a couple of systems that I came across. I'm hoping like I've seen a test up to like seven, eight months at this point that still looks really, really promising with kind of a newer leap. It's actually not quite a ceramic coating. It's something new, it's something different. So hopefully it's not snake oil. Doesn't seem like it. And then the other one, the sharp line one, that has like basically a, a hydrophobic, like an extra bottle um, that you can give the client And so when they go to like clean their glass, it's a really quick thing for them to just apply as they're basically cleaning their windows. So that was a cool option too. Um, another quick and easy upsell is glass ceramic coatings, mainly for front windshields. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about, uh-huh. I want to do it like, and you could. I, I'm assuming you can also do it to like the mirrors and stuff. Because I came across these little hydrophobic rectangles essentially that you can stick onto your glass. And they were selling them as things that you could put over your, uh, your side mirrors for when it's rainy and water sticks there. And, whatever, and it's like, oh, well then, I would probably, like they're so small, clean those off too, do the windshield and like the side mirrors. And then have another price for like all the rear, or maybe the, the windshield and front doors and then have a price for the rest of the vehicle and whatnot, kind of make it a no brainer. They have, they have a coating now that's in like a deodorant case and it looks super easy to use. <laughs> that's cool, I haven't come across that one yet. 
Yeah, sounds like there's a handful of good options out there now, so that's super cool. I think it's something that that like I, I'm I know there's there's a ton of shops that already have stuff that they install. So this is I'm not I'm not breaking new territory here at all. It's just something that, you know, I wasn't didn't come across anything I was super happy with at the time. So now I'm kinda like I'm I'm peeking back into that space. Kind of forgot about it, got distracted with all this stuff, and then I'm like, ooh, I wonder, I wonder what's come along. So yeah, at this point, I think I'm literally gonna, like my, uh, the water for the shop is all the way in that back corner. I think I'm literally gonna string um, a water line all the way across to the showroom and set up a really easy, big demo on a windshield in the showroom. I think that would be super cool. Any tips for a 2022 Bronco Sport? Uh, no. I, I want to say I came across um, a video. I, I just look at the inside. They look more like a Jeep to me. I haven't done a 22 Bronco yet. So unfortunately, I, I have no idea. I think they got frameless front doors. I think they got frameless front doors and a relatively straightforward windshield is probably just a little bit more upright. But yeah, unfortunately I don't have any more than that because I haven't done one. You're getting a newer vehicle than I got. Congrats. <laughs> I was thinking about getting a bunch of car key chains to sell, also get to people leave reviews on Google. Hopefully it works out. Nice. Keychains. Keep keychains and keepsakes, um, you might be able to sell them, but giving something away with a job so they remember you is is a is a big deal. So like some people have some really creative branding. They'll do like either microfibers. Um, in like the cup holders and stuff like that, or you know what I mean, they just like lay them out nicely. That with like a little can of glass cleaner or something, like you know, just something that is just pushes you over that. It's a nice idea. As the person whose card is watching now, uh, he came across the channel. That's how he first found this place, so I think so. Or maybe he got bored at this point. <laughs> Thinking how to stand out to the customer without spending too much money. Well that, I'll tell you, that that much attitude alone is a good start. Just being nice, attentive. Yeah, we gotta do this one just a little bit too. Cause I did the other side, all right. And yeah, having like a little keepsake or something a nice idea. There's a shocking amount of people that just don't think that far. <laughs> so you already got a good leg up. Where can I get the clear plastic for the doors? Um, the one I use is called Carpet Shield. Would I be able to swing by the shop and grab a roll of glass aid? 
Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think if I, yeah, I've got some in, I got some newer ones here. I was, wanted to bring the tools earlier. I have some custom mirror hangers. Nice. There we go. That's better. There's some custom mirror hangers that say don't roll down for 48 hours underneath. It has my logo. Hashtag if you love your tints, leave a review. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I've been using the uh, the mirror hangers from Sun Distributing. It's just a nice little like professional thing. It's got the roll down dates, care instructions, just those like, you know, those general questions a lot of people have. They can reference that. So you have something actually on paper that, you know, like hey, these are kind of what to expect with it. Obviously, run through like the main ones like. The two that I always say is like there's going to be moisture in between the film and the glass, so we're going to leave the windows rolled up, and then I'll actually show them this is what that looks like. So if they've never had tint before, they've heard the term bubbles. <laughs> so then they see the water pockets, and sometimes their mind goes straight to, oh, this is a problem. Is this okay? This doesn't look right. So if you catch it ahead of time, It's great. This guy in here. We made all the little adjustments on the other side. So hopefully it makes sense to this side. Yes. <laughs> How late do you think it'll be there on Wednesday? I have no idea. Probably by like three or four, if I had to guess. I, I'm not. I'm not sure though. But it's cool. And I got somebody helping out with some stuff. Although he's not going to be here Wednesday either. But soon enough. Uh, what do you think about GeoShield's carbon and ceramic? Well, we're installing the carbon. And I often install the ceramic. So I like both of them a lot. Yeah, they're good films for sure. All right, this down. So we are wrapping up the doors. Then we're gonna run into the...
There we go. Yep, so we're gonna turn this back off, pull the tape, and we'll, we'll figure out what we're doing about these quarters. <laughs> Damn it. That's the worst. Mike Hobbs super chatted two dollars. Matt, my wife says thanks for the autographed tri edge. <laughs> you are very welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for the two, and thanks again for coming out here. I'm glad she likes the uh, the autographed tri edge. That's really nice. Thanks so much for the two. And it's, again, it's super cool to hear you're knocking out windshields now. That, that's a big one. Cool to hear that the class actually mattered. <laughs> I heard you say earlier Helios tint is good for a beginner. You're talking the Orbit or the Nova, or is there, all, or are they all good? Um, they're all definitely good. They're, it's just, if you're looking for um, a line of film that isn't too expensive, but is definitely like, it's definitely nicer, something that you would trust on customer vehicles, Orbit's a great, a great option for sure. So Helios Orbit, that's gonna be the first line. Last I looked, it was like 185 for like a 36 by 100 foot roll. That is, that is very, very affordable for a roll of that caliber. Okay, so let me see here. Canon. Why do you choose Geo Shield film? There's not much information. I know a lot from um, talking with the owner of it. I've been around in the film space for quite a while, so I have a good idea where a wide range of films kind of come from. And I've used some of their films well before. Uh, and then use somebody else's film. So like when I was first looking into carbon and ceramic films, they were the first one that we ever used. They were just like one of the first ones to, to the American market with the, with the ceramic film. Do you use Omnique film? I get a lot of customers asking if I carry films, but I've heard bad things. Yeah, I've seen bad things. There's a couple lines, and I guess they say this right on their site. Somebody got the gold one. It faded inside of like eight, nine months, and the pink one will fade even faster than that, or the red one will. They say that on their site, I guess. I don't know how long the other ones will, but it's kind of a touchy, touchy territory because not many people use them, and so they don't really get any type of like proven reputation. They, it, and no major manufacturers actually make those. None, none that I'm ever aware of. So it's one of those things where it's like, if somebody, like I, I could recommend them to get film from that site and then I could install it for them. I don't have a problem, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I just can't, I don't wanna assume any liability. That's the unfortunate part. I mean, even like Ultravision, there was this guy, he like ordered like four windshields from that company. And it was like a problem with their adhesive, but I saw other problems with the, uh, the coloring and stuff. So it just, yeah. So this is a 40. I haven't done, oof, do we do it this way? All right, whatever, we'll do it that way. 
Wait, do I have? <gasps> I do. Hang on one sec. I know what I gotta get. I know what I gotta get. I do have a carbon five roll that I can use. That's a short. That's sitting over here. Carbon five. This guy. I forgot I had this. Should have been using this for the sides already. <laughs> I've heard it fades quickly, but a shop in my area is charging top dollar for it. Ah, uh, yep. I don't know what they're telling people. Maybe call them up and go, hey, what's the warranty on that stuff? And see what they say. I think it's dicey. Um, you know, if you just stay blissfully ignorant and just go ahead and throw it on, what's the worst that could happen? It fails. <laughs> How long? I, I don't know. But yeah, I've always wanted to like, I've wanted to do an option like that for a long time. I mean, come on, I've, I've got a YouTube channel here doing crazy stuff, just like comes with the territory here. But if somebody wants to bring it in, I'm more than happy to install it. I'm just, I'm not gonna go seek it out at this point, not unless a big company comes along and says, hey, we did it. And then it's like, okay. Or somebody can prove it. All right, let's do a little test here. Yeah, so we set this up last time. This is the, uh, this is a workhorse too. And I have a video coming out on this thing soon. Unfortunately, it was a painful process to set up. It's not really any one person's fault. It's just kind of how it went. But look, yay, I get it all, I get it all tuned in. So if we're gonna do a quarter window, we might as well test these ones. I would much rather Platter cut these ones than any of the other ones. What one did I do? Rear, right. Oh, no, no, So that's the left one. Okay, so that makes sense. Oops. Oh, I think I didn't push a button yet. Uh, enter. There we go. Do you do any mirror tints? No. Same thing. Most, most film, like this, okay, so most film manufacturers with any type of decent reputation, they have black films. What they focus on is offering dyed, carbon, ceramic, metallized films, different types. Colors haven't really done a lot. Like, they used to be a thing years ago, and people were just putting whatever colors, like just a one color tone on their vehicle. It used to be an older thing. But it's like so many people don't get it, so there's just not much of a market for it. And then with colors, there's so many options too. So like, you know, it's not just like, oh yeah, we have green. It's like, no, you gotta carry like, possibly like four different greens. But 
we've seen some interesting things happen with chameleon films, but where are they coming from? It's probably sketchy Chinese manufacturers. So it's cool that they're making it, but the, the problem obviously is like, there's only so many people that want to spend a good amount of money on their car and kind of guess. Did I really just cut out the same quarter? I did? Shut up. Oh, no, I didn't. This was the right one. I'm crazy. Okay. <gasps> no. I'm stupid. That's the weirdest thing. This goes this way. Huh. Okay. That goes the other way. It looks like you would you would think it'd go the other way, but that curve comes on the front side of it, so I was just confused. All right. So yeah, so with chameleon films, it's it's like it's uncharted. Well, not completely uncharted territory. It's just sketchy. So if somebody, it, it's it's got about for me as many people. Like if, if somebody calls and goes, hey, is there any way I can get chameleon film? It's like, sure, I'll maybe point them in a direction. And then go, what do you like? Or like pick one of these films, order it, bring it in, and I'll install it. And I'll just do my best with working with it. I obviously can't guarantee it. So whatever happens, happens. Got it. How do you clean the sh textured shop floor? Uh, spray it down, scrub it a little bit. Um, and then to clean underneath it, you got to pull the whole thing up. So all the dirt will settle underneath it. So you don't really have to worry about it for a while unless you're like real, real anal about it. Oh, damn, we screwed it up. All right, I gotta recut this. I just got caught up there. But it looks like this is gonna be fine. Cool. It was really quick to cut out, so we'll just do another one. Right door fixed. This is why I like plotter for quarter windows. I'm gonna do quarter windows on a plotter. You just get lots of, you get lots of chances. See this? Oh, this is uh, so annoying. Microsoft, why you do that? Because they found where people accidentally put their mice and they want people to see their super annoying pop-up window. 
Remember they put it on the left side and it wasn't much of an issue. Now it just pops up all the time. You hover over and it's like, hey, the news. I've heard they're not much better in Windows 11. I haven't tried it yet though. I don't want to. You know why I'm glad I don't get many Toyotas? It's just quarter windows like these drive me a little bit crazy. Some of them are okay, and some of them just pinch too much in certain spots and just make it an absolute pain. This one, I don't think is all that bad. Just having a a little bit of a headache today. I increased it there too. All right, one more time. I think I'm gonna do something else too. Just have some tools up there to loosen it up a bit. Yeah. It's kind of a combo. It's sticking. Just needs to slide a little better. One of the biggest one of the biggest problems is just when film tacks up when you need to slide it in a space like that. So we'll make a little slick bottle here. Then we'll cut out one more. Do it again. What hat? How do you restore a window that you accidentally just closed? Have you ever accidentally damaged electronics? Yeah, for sure. It's not fun. <laughs> Reopen it, thanks. <laughs> thanks, guy. What time is it? 12. Okay. Yeah, we're doing fine. Okay, there's that. Let's see if this will do it. It's not all that crazy, just the paneling kind of gets in the way. Just 
So we'll spray some extra on there, and then this hopefully will do it. Is your glass board tempered glass? Uh, it's a storm window. I actually don't know. Like, I don't know everything about it. It was here. I was lucky. When I moved in here, as far as I could tell, this was already like a window place. And so there's beefy electrical. Beefy electrical, which is super cool. And, uh, and there were some storm windows sitting in the back. So I gutted them, just took them out of the frames. All but one. We good? Ooh, I think we got it. That helped. I don't think it made it. I don't think it was like, it definitely helped. It just helped squeak it in place. Just the way the gasket kind of pinches in, it holds the film along the edge. So when you, it rolls up on you, it wants to make the film crease on itself. It looks good. Good job. Good job, film cut. Extra soapy spray bottle, who knew? Five over factory? Yes. <laughs> Took some professional patience. But, so like, you know, just all the paneling, it always is more inside and then you gotta tuck the film, you gotta sneak it in there. And especially on these edges, this top corner here, it just, there's not a ton, but enough to make it annoying. Just a lot of little, little things that kind of get in your way there. But I can make it all pretty much like look good from here and then you gotta look up this way and like oh is it all the way gapped up there like you know what I mean <laughs> it sucks oh, Honda Toyota Subaru they like to do gasket style rear quarter windows these ones are fine these ones are cake compared to stuff like that Lexus Lexus will do that a lot too Patterns seem good though.
Um, do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's worth it to invest in a graph tech plotter? Um, to be honest, nowadays, if you're just cutting out window tint, um, the workhorse one or the workhorse two, it's plenty fine enough. Seems to be a good machine. The workhorse two is a beefier machine. It just feels better built. Where the workhorse one, to me, it feels chintzy. Definitely in comparison. But what's really nice is they have, they have really good support for their machines too. So I wouldn't have gotten the Workhorse 2 set up without talking to their support. We had to pop up the hood, we had to loosen a couple of screws, and that turned out to be an issue, and I've never had to do that on any plotter. It was just the way it was initially set up, it was like 99% there, and then there was one type of cut. It would try and make a large round cut, and it would just give me like jagged edges. I thought it was a software thing at first, and then I cut out the workhorse one, and then it was like totally fine, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, what? <laughs> all right, guys, what's going on? But we got that all squared away. Um, and then there's a couple of other things. So a big problem with these machines that I've dogged them for is roller placements. They're not, like, so you put, when you go to cut stuff, you put it on the ends of the tent so the rollers don't put marks in it. Well, apparently, I just found this out the other day. Apparently, you can take a file, and they're doing with this with the new machines that they're shipping. So they're opening them up, they're checking them out, and they are, they're dialing them in ahead of time. And I, as far as I know, they're taking a file, grinding down the rollers a little bit, and then you can use all the rollers across the board. It's not just about using one roller anymore, or two rollers. So then, you don't have to worry about roller placements anymore. You just throw the roll on it. Um, obviously, you probably got to still make sure the ends. I haven't tested it a whole lot. You probably got to make sure that there's still rollers on the ends, but you have supporting rollers in the middle. And that's just like a whole new idea there that I have not even thought of. So I got to do that. I'll probably make a video when I do it. Just make sure that everything's okay. Kevin's done it though, and he says it works great. Do you see that, guys? Second one. Second one went more more better. Yeah, so they're, even the graph tech, yeah. So the way that you set up a plotter is you're supposed to leave the pinch rollers only on the ends. For vinyl, uh, you can leave them anywhere because you have that paper backing on it. Same thing with paint protection film. You have a different backing. With window tint, it'll leave impressions through the entire thing. So a lot of these machines, they're for vinyl, not window tinting. So that we've just picked up these machines and, and adapted them, and they're good enough that when you fine tune them, they'll work with window tint. So then you just give that little mod there, and it'll work. But the, <laughs> nobody told me that, and I got rid of it because of the marks it left. Oh my god, really? You had one? You had a GraphTech 9000? Oh, damn. Yeah, you're only supposed to use the side rollers because of that. 
Nobody told me that. <sighs> that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, graph techs are awesome. They have some features on them. Like, they're, they're better built machines. They have some features on them that make them more user friendly. To where you don't have to babysit them quite as much as, as you do like a workhorse. So the workhorse is really, both of them have this really annoying feature off. Oh, dang. I got it at the start of the pandemic, had zero support, had set up myself, which was a nightmare. Dude, I've set up plotters myself. Setting up that one turned out to be a nightmare, too. Like, most of the time, it's, it's just like dialing in the cut blade. The, the, Oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. It's about doing the pressure and the speed until it's cutting just right. And that's about all you have to do. <laughs> On that one. <laughs> Good God. There, so I had to pop open the hood. This is something that I don't think you can probably, I don't, I don't think you can do this on the, on the other ones. But like, there's this hood on it. This is interesting. They're like, pop the hood on it. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, this part lifts up. And I was like, really? Turns out you can, wah. And then this came off. And then there's a couple of screws that I just had to do a quarter turn, just make them a little bit looser. And that fixed my problem. Go figure. Would never have figured that one out. What's the difference between the workhorse and the Titan? I don't know. I don't know the Titan. Um, hey, so we can cut out both here. So let's do that. Yep, real good. Ooh, we got a super chat. We like super chats. RGC super chatted $9.99. Quarters are the toughest, my man. <laughs> RGC, damn, thank you so much for the 10. I really appreciate that. Quarters are the toughest, my man. <laughs> you know what just makes me laugh about that is uh, um, a, uh, an auto glass shop will sometimes tell you the exact same thing, too. So I had that older Civic, and I did a dumb thing. I accidentally locked in, locked the keys in the car. It was my car. Um, it was just like a POS car for, um, for like a secondary car. And I was just moving it over to the shop. And then it was the winter time, so it had been sitting for a long time. Battery died. Open it up, get it started, have both keys, and it's got one of those locks on the doors that's either red or not red. And I was just like, I think it's unlocked. I don't know. And then I accidentally shut the door, both keys in it, locked the door, great. I'm a dumbass. So then I tried to get into it, and it's already running, so I, just was frustrated and ended up accidentally breaking the quarter window while I was trying to pop the door open. I'm not a locksmith. So that happened. Um, so I had to buy a new quarter window for it. We wanted to sell it. It was sitting here for a while. Talked to the glass shop that I tinted for and they laughed too. They're like, you should have broke the door window. And I'm like, really? But the quarter window's smaller. And they're like, and you tint windows. That's exactly what you tell me. He's like, yeah, quarter window doesn't often break. 
So they're just hard to come by. So there's the most expensive window. You should have gone with the door window. <laughs> expensive window. Yep. So they just suck for everybody. Ever seen a Toyota Sequoia? It's the bigger SUV? No, actually. Maybe a long time ago. Not anytime soon. I, I hardly... I, I've done, you know, I've done a handful more Toyotas, like the Sienna, uh, just did a 4Runner, we're doing a Highlander right now, I've done the trucks, I just don't get many Toyotas, so, but yeah, if any of, and if any of you guys have to break into your own cars, just do the, do the biggest, most popular window, actually not the biggest, sorry, this probably makes it sound like the windshield. Do the door window. <laughs> Quarter windows. Nuh uh. Super. Miley Sirius super chatted five dollars. Guy or top ceramic for Wait. a half life civic. Your setup is exquisite. <laughs> Was that Miley Sirius? <laughs> is that the name? <laughs> Miley Sirius. That's what it read to me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for the five. Die or top ceramic for a half life civic. Um for a half, what's a Half-Life Civic? Can you explain, is that like a Civic on its way out? VTech. Let me get a razor blade. It needs it. A hundred thousand miles? Oh, <laughs> that's fair. I, there's people that run their Civics for a long, long time out here. So, I don't know. Um, it, it just kind of depends on where your budget is. So, ceramic, I mean, that's, that's honestly why carbon's such a good option, too, because it, it's kind of that sweet spot right in the middle. But I hear you, all or nothing. So, the way I always explain ceramic to people is... If you want to block out a lot of heat from your car and just a much more comfortable driving experience, it doesn't matter what kind of car you drive. You can put that on anything. Once you drive with ceramic, it's hard to drive without it. That being said, there's a lot of comfort in just doing a nice medium shade because glare is also a big problem too. So when you knock down the glare, it already makes driving more comfortable. So you'll probably be happy just at least doing that. But ceramic always takes it a step further with just dramatically blocking out heat. So it doesn't matter if you're in a Half-Life Civic or a Primo car. It's just nice. Just depends on where your budget is. So, a lot of shops nowadays, they have the heat lamp demonstration. So that helps you really make that decision. You'll still walk up to your car and it can be hot. When you're sitting in there though, it's better. Stuck in traffic. You got the air conditioning going. The sun is still bleeding through your windows, warming up like one side of your body and the other one's kind of cooler. It just, to me, that gives me a headache. Good patterns. What kegs do you run? Is it a sun distributing? Yeah, I have a sun distributing tank keg. It's 
awesome. So this one has a, what looks like an antenna grid here. So obviously we're not gonna use a blade on that or the back window. So we could use a scrub pad if it needs it or clay bar too will be very helpful. Oh, what size keg? Um, the three gallon. I think the three gallon is the best size. Five gallon is, is a little on the overkill side. So things to consider is, are you gonna be moving it around a garage relatively frequently? If so, three gallons gonna be better. Uh, three gallons going to give you basically enough slip, slip solution to go through an entire day. And you're going to have to clean out your bottle pretty much every other day anyways. Like you'll empty it, add new slip solution. So a five gallon... A five gallon is a little annoying because of how much bigger it is when you have to empty and clean it out. So when I was running around three gallon, I had a five gallon here, I've used it. Um, even, even leaving it stationary there, I, I, we ended up doing a giveaway. And when I got a new keg, I was like, yeah, give me a three gallon. I like that better. I switched from Global Ceramic using GeoShield Pro Nano Ceramic. Best thing I ever did. Shrink so easy. Really? That's great to hear. I haven't used Global Ceramic. Pro Nano is a tough film to beat, though. I know that much. It always seems like... You know, the th that's the thing about Geo, is they just don't have the name. So like, when you're looking at a company, obviously you're gonna weigh like their presence and when more people are using one company than another and they sell their film for more and they've got a bigger presence, like ooh, that company's better. There's some, there's a fair amount of, uh, I mean, you can call them B tier, I don't know. They just, they carry really, really good films. They go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big boys. They're just not as big of a company as the big boys are. So what you typically get along with that too is usually like, honestly, better support. Because they, they deal with a lot more people that are in your range. More personalized support, more, not, what, how do you call it? I don't know, that's, that's how I describe it. They've got like, they, they just, they can pay attention to you a lot more. They're busy, they're moving film, but they make time for everybody. You don't get lost in the, in the corporate structure with them. Maybe they'll grow past that point and eventually they'll, they'll be too big. <laughs> but I mean, I've been really happy working with them. They've been awesome. All right, now we got a back window too. All the sides, the rear is done, except for that back window. Things are coming along good. Let's, we'll cut that one out. Let me just make sure this is all Tracking correctly. Yeah, man, this thing's awesome now. I'd try. I'd like to try Geo. Always been caught by big names like 3M, Lumar for the exact same reason. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing. When you don't know, like I, I, you know, I've just I've been around window film for a long time. I've talked to a lot of 
a lot of people, both with companies and window tenors. And it's like I've had the privilege of kind of, you know, and the ambition to just pay attention a lot. Ask the people the right questions at the right time. So to like to try it, it's pretty straightforward though. Just order some film. <laughs> but I'm not trying to switch everybody over to Geo. It's just I had to use something. And you know, I think it would be really cool, and there's a lot to be said about some of these other companies. So like um what did I do to myself? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's just it's just hidden around the corner here. So like uh like solar FX. They seem like a great option too. They they're like in this interesting place too. I think they've got a larger name and they got far more clients at this point. They don't quite have like an, a name as recognizable as like 3M or really Lumar. But they're definitely bigger. Good company from what I can tell. I would definitely trust their products. But you don't get that same same impression necessarily from them when you're shopping around is like, oh, 3M's got window film. What's that all about? That sounds awesome. It's 3M. I forgot the whole point of that. Oh, but I was gonna. Oh, I think I was gonna talk about territories a little bit. Some of these companies they have territories, so they're kind of like slotted in there, and they have territories that you have to. Uh, that not everybody is gonna get an opportunity to use them, and one thing that I took really seriously when I was, you know, trying to figure out a long-term option for here too, is like, you know. The channel is a giant portion of this. And if I got to have a bunch of people that go, man, I really want to use it, there's just another guy that's using it. But down the road for me, I can't, they won't let me install it. What do I do? Like, I hate that. Because at the end of the day, the, the film that you choose for your business is not going to make your business. You're going to make your business, and then you can figure out whatever film that you want to use for it. There are certain advantages to partnering with a company, but unless you like, if you had no idea about running your business and then you partner up with a company and then they basically give you a program that you follow to the T and then you have a successful company, that is an awesome, awesome thing. That is a win-win. They're happy to sell you film. They're happy to help you grow. They helped you grow. They helped you along make your business what it is. But for a lot of people, you can ask them advice, but whatever film that you decide to bring into your company, like your customers are your customers. They're coming to you first, and then they might ask what film they, that you use, but you have display boards up front or however you show them, and they're just like, ah, oh, cool, yeah. You recommended this, it looks good, I'm happy with the work. You know, I trust the guy that I go to. So the branding is definitely only a small, small part of the whole thing. Some, some of these companies at least help you like feel better about either charging more <laughs> or, or getting to that point or, you know, saying what they're, you know, because they want to see you pulling big money too. Then they charge you big money 
and like it works out for everybody, right? You're making a killing off of them. They help you establish your business, blah, 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 hopefully. Where it really gets lost on me is like these companies where people are paying a ton of money to pull in their film, and then they could have any box of film on the shelf. They just want to feel like they can trust it. And in those situations, it's like the, the branding for the film, yeah, it just doesn't matter. You want it to be professional enough, so if a, a client is like, hey, what films do you use? I was going to research them a little bit. Then, then they have info, and it's not just a product page that they can go to and just buy it outright. Like, that's a little, like, eh. <laughs> I don't know. So there's all these little like pros and cons to, to think about when you're figuring out what film to carry and just a lot of it is just like, hey, what film, what company seems like they're good? They're not too far away from me, so they you know might work better if I'm in a pinch and I need to, oh shit, I need to order film, I forgot. This film will get here faster. I like their pricing, they seem to take care of their clients, they answer all my questions when I call them on the phone. All those things, they definitely matter. Is Lumar, is Lumar considered expensive? Yes, yeah, Lumar's definitely up there. The weird, the weird thing about them is, like in a lot of areas, they have kind of like oversaturated. So like, Lumar's kind of one of those things that sometimes you can get a really good deal <laughs> on Lumar for your car. Because there's just so many like Lumar dealers, like everybody's like, oh yeah, we just carry Lumar. And then there's like, but then they're charging just rock bottom prices for it and that that's like completely backwards XR plus is even more get the fuck out of here is it really <laughs> I haven't gone down that rabbit hole. Not a ton. Archie I've got C. the film Super sitting here that I have to go through. Cents. Thanks for all the advice, the dude. Which, Clearview, thank you again for sending that out. That was super nice. We'll be doing a test. Now it's finally like, <laughs> it's finally getting hot enough here. There's like plenty of months where it was, it, it just like wasn't even hitting uh, above 70. It's like if I'm going to do a super heat rejection test, I need it to be hot. And then it started getting hot for a couple of days and then it rained. I think we finally have some nice weather clearing up here. What happens when you burn a door panel? When you pay for a new one? Don't do it. Somebody brings you their car to tint. Yeah, unfortunately, like, got to be careful. Expel worth it or just a big scam? Well, they've, they've got a lot of happy dealers, so. No. No, I wouldn't say it's a scam. But, you know, you're probably... Drinking some Kool Aid. <laughs> but if your pricing and all your stuff lines up, then are you really upset?
Plus, they got, you know, they got shareholders they got to make happy. the family that's murdering out this Highlander. <laughs> I, for, I almost forgot about that term. Make sure we're all covered. I thought this back window was actually going to be taller. No, you're right. It's dark. It's five over the privacy. No, there was a setting that we changed, and I'm wondering if, I heard a couple things. So like, he had a recommended setting that we pushed onto the plotter, um, as far as like, I don't know, X and, X and Y, and I think that has to do with the way that the tr plotter translates the software patterns. And I think on the, the larger the pattern, the more sensitive it is or like the more it shows. So I think that this is doing them wide, which is kind of not great. Because I also do the same setting on the Workforce 1. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta, I'll talk to them again. Thoughts on the Highlander as a car in general? You know what people don't ask me? They hardly ever ask me, what do I think of the vehicle that I'm even tinting? It's nice. I don't have enough time to, uh, I didn't have enough time to really appreciate it. I took a closer look at the Pathfinder. I like the big old screen. When I was pulling it in and using the camera system though, it definitely like gave me every other Toyota camera vibes where they have a 360 camera on it and that's cool. It's very cool, I'm glad that they do that. I think they need to just upgrade their cameras by a lot. But so much about this is actually pretty nice. Yeah, it's cool, I like it a lot. Good family SUV for sure. You should do reviews of cars that come in. How much do you charge to tent all the sides in the back? Toyota 4Runner with SunTech, CIR doing mobile service. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm assuming that's what, what you're using, doing a mobile service. I don't know, I don't, I don't carry that film. So, so all the way around with the windshield uh, in, in like Pro Nano, um, I charge 650 to like 700. Mobile, I just don't do mobile. But maybe that helps a little bit. Oh, so yeah, when I was heating this up, I used the heat gun on high. Like I said, I always control the distance of it, or the heat with distance. So if I don't want it to get too hot, I pull it back. If I want it to get hotter, I close, I put it closer. But you notice I'll only do that for half a second. You get it close, get the spot that you need, back it off. Don't leave it there. Jeffrey Horstman super chatted $5. What a bear. Thanks for all the tips. I'm going to buy an already existing tin shop and I don't need do to mobile know neither, this but stuff. This guy wants me to do come there. Glass till now. I would tell him... Unfortunately, I don't do mobile. <laughs> I don't know. No, if it fits in, if it fits in your in your wheelhouse, that's totally fine. Just I always make sure, like, hey, you got like a spot with halfway decent lighting that I can open up all the doors and make it happen. Because their space, like, 
it's not that you can't put out tint jobs in poor spaces. It's like, how much harder is your life going to be working wherever else you are? Just throw it a stupid price, and if he says yes, then cool, you got a lot of money for it. I wouldn't, I, I honestly wouldn't try and practically price it. There's, I'll tell you what, there's something to be said where you're doing something completely outside of what you normally do. It's not that you can't do it. It's how much do you want to encourage that type of work? And there's little unforeseen things like, oh yeah, it should be as simple as going out here, doing the job, and then boom, I'm on my way. But then this happens, and then this comes up, and then it pulls you away from your shop, and then you need to be at your shop for something else, and like, before you know it, something that was a simple thing, all of a sudden is a major inconvenience, so. I've had stuff like that happen too much. I just say like, sorry, I don't do mobile. If you really want me to do it, you come here. But I'm nice about it. Because I got like everything set up. And then if there's a problem with the job, then what? You got to go back out there and fix it? <laughs> right in the driveway? Yeah, that's a huge no. No thanks. I'm good. Thanks, boss. I'll pass. <sighs> there was, uh, so when I was doing mobile work, most mobile work, and this is the way that I, I liked looking at mobile. Mobile work was like going to other shops, getting comfortable with them, and they getting comfortable with you, and having a particular space. Like, this is where we bring in the tent jobs for you to tent. So you kind of know what you're getting into already. You might have to move from one bay to another. But just like you know, completely new situation every time. And it's like, you always got to figure out, all right, I need to pull the car here. Wind, space, lighting, all those little things, they all add up. It sucks. Cool. Canopy, and they're setting up a canopy. Yeah, it's just, there's other guys that, that like doing it, and that's, or, you know, like to do it, or that's, that's, that's what they do. That's cool, man. That is not my jam. Let me get a couple more towels. Just not my jam. So I'm not going to I'm not going to be the best person to ask about that. Like I've dealt with it and it just seems like a lot of people like that do mobile inevitably want to find a place that they can settle down. How about you have to use the bathroom after Taco Bell and mobile? That's hard to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That would be a problem.
plotter, tint, or freehand? Um, you can do good with both. I mean, what we've seen is a nice hybrid here. You guys see how I've kind of brought one in and made it work with, with my workflow. I generally will hand cut the doors, and then if it makes sense, I'll do the back quarters. I'll do the back quarters um, and back glass off the plotter, and and that makes like that makes a ton of sense. Right. So you have good cuts on the back. If they're a little larger, that's fine. We can make up for those. And then on the doors. I get my nice hand cut doors. So I save some time one way and make it work the other. But it is dependent on the software that you use. So this is this is film cut. Canon. And film cut's really good. They've added some features. And I'm still going through plotter growing pains too, so like bear with me on that. Down here in Texas is super hot and my shop's AC can't keep up. It's really hot inside the shop and baby shampoo is tacking right away. Should I add Dawn to the mix? Yes, add a little bit of Dawn. Just like a good squirt of it along with whatever baby shampoo you put in there. It makes a difference, especially if you're using like these films. Who owns Film Cut? Um, so Film Cut is through Plotter Depot. But it looks really close to DigiCut, so. I started a single car garage and I couldn't open the doors all the way to fit a lot of bigger cars. Hey, I've, I've tinted in really tight spaces too. I started at my, my dad's shop, which gave me a big advantage. He's not a window tinner, but he got me training. I wasn't necessarily, like, I wasn't looking to be a window tinner. I was going to aviation mechanic school, and it was just a good opportunity to make extra money and a solid skill to have. So I was doing both at the same time, and I just kept tinting. Um, but doing doing a lot of mobile work, we'd go to all these shops. I wonder if I can show you those. I'm trying to, uh, this will probably be a little harder to find maps. Maybe we can do it on maps. Somebody walking around back there? I know. So the uh, the client's waiting on it, so we'll cash them out in just a minute here. And then uh, I hired uh, somebody to help. Fifteen photos. Here we go. So this was a place, one of the, so Cartoons is a uh, big remote start slash audio company. I wonder if they have any pictures of the back. So this was a pretty tiny showroom, but they got it all decked out with lots of speakers and stuff like that. I'm wondering if they have any, any pictures of the back. The back is tiny. Okay, so you have one bay here, and then you have one bay on the other side. Let's take a trip. Let's go here. So I would park here, and that was my tent bay there, and there's not enough space to open up the sides, like all the way. So you're like bumping into the sides the whole time. This is a teeny, teeny tiny one. And you know what? I made great money out of this location. Look, see, you can kind of, oh God, it's closed there. How did it close? Damn it. Everything changed. But if we're on this corner, it's open. And the vehicles are different. What the heck? And then this one, it's all closed up too. So somebody would tint in this bay, somebody would tint in the other. They have an upstairs for like extra storage and stuff. But you had like really high ceilings. Like it was all open to the top, but the garage doors didn't go that high either. So you can even fit huge vehicles in there. 
So that space, like, I made great money out of that space. It was not clean. It was not super fun. In the wintertime, the truck would stick out the back, and it'd be cold. But, yeah, yeah, you don't need a, a big, pretty space to make good money, that's for sure. Have you tried the editing tool on film cut. Yes, yes, the editing tool is fantastic. Finally, holy my God. Okay, so I have an example that I'm gonna put in my video about it. So let's say you have a door window here. Um, there was no way to make the patterns bigger. And then with, uh, so Tint Tech 2020, what we would do if the pattern was too short, we would do this. We would edit template, and then we would make the, make the sides either longer or the pattern taller, and it would basically stretch it. But what, what's cool about Film Cut is now they have this resize tool over here. You click on this, you hold shift, you drag a box over the area that you wanna stretch, and then you make it, let's say, a quarter inch longer. You click quarter inch, that auto fills here. You, so you can make it a foot longer if you wanted to. And then you click plus and watch It'll get longer, and then it'll get longer, and longer, and longer, and longer, and longer, and longer, and longer, right? But it's only doing it from that area, and it's doing it in that direction, which is amazing. So you're just like, ah, if this pattern was only a quarter inch longer, I could make this work. Well, now you can. Yes. So they're making some moves. It's good to see. Although, at that point, it's a redeeming quality of the pattern. Like, if you install a pattern and it doesn't line up, you, you already wasted time, you wasted film, that's just a quirk of plotters, that's what happens, but now you have the ability to stretch them out and get them to fit better. So that's, that's very, very good to see. I like it a lot. All righty, my dudes. Let me shout out some super dupers. My, uh, my week this week has managed to fill out, so there will be more streams this week. Probably the next one will be Wednesday, I'm, I'm, I imagine. Um, but in the meantime, let's shout out some super chats. Thank you guys so much. There's a whole bunch of them today. Jeffrey. What a bear. Thanks for all the tips I'm gonna buy and already exist. Oh, did I miss yours? Hang on, we'll, we'll come back to that one. Jeffrey, RGC, <laughs> Miley Serious, RGC, Mike Hobbs, Mike Hobbs, uh, Alligator, uh, Chanik, I think, I think Chain, we'll call you Chain. That's, <laughs> I think I pronounced that right. Thank you guys so much, I really, really appreciate it. And then, so Jeffrey, Jeffrey asked a question, what a bear, thanks for all the tips. I'm gonna buy an already existing tin shop and need to know this stuff. I honestly do mostly flat glass now. Oh, no question, just that, thank you. I really appreciate that. Sorry, I missed that one. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's awesome. Flat glass is great, I hear. I, I don't specialize in flat glass, but I know you can make a lot of money with flat glass. Auto's nice though, because people come to you, unless you're mobile, then you go to them. I work at a tin shop, and it was offered uh, a part-time position, but I only have one year left at my current job before I'm vested into the company for full benefits. Even if I left the company, what would you do? I don't know. Do you hate where you're at? Is there a way to hang in there an extra year, get full benefits, and then maybe work part-time? Oh, offered a full-time position. That's what FT is. Offered a full-time position, but I have one year left at my current job. So it depends on it depends on what you want to do. Grinding out window tinning is still difficult. There's lots of tin shops around, depending on your area, but there's still lots of tin shops, and there's good opportunity. But it is hard work to get there, and especially if you're going 100% off of off of being a tin shop, um, and like counting on employees and stuff like that. Like it is a grind. Um, you can make great money as a window tinner, but you gotta remember you're always doing the work until you hire people and then it's a grind in a different sense. 
you're doing the work, getting people, this person left, you gotta retrain somebody. Like there, there's lots of pros and cons to it all. I don't know what your current job is and full-time benefits, that sounds great. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the, what the decision would be, but you know, I've enjoyed not being beholden to you know, a corp corporation, I guess. Wow, that was a mouthful. Yeah, I, I'm glad I'm not under any one big company's thumb that I start making too much money and then they have to slim payroll and I get, I get chopped and I have to go find something else. I like that. It's good. It's freedom. But you definitely are stressed out in a different way too. So until you get to a certain point where your shop just is kind of moving, some shops can be very, very successful and do great. But it is a lot of work to get there. And some people just have a natural knack to it um, and can figure things out much faster. So it's not a question I can answer for you, but that's definitely some, some cons to being a tin shop for sure. But then you do cars, you offer flat glass, you find some flat glass people, you start scaling as a business, and yeah. Yeah, it's fun. All righty, my dudes, I'm going to take off here. Um, I got some other stuff, so we got to figure out we got to go through some systems with the new guy. Um, you know, phone calls, uh, tint whiz proposals, that type of stuff. So um, he's been cleaning up the back this whole time, which is just like is awesome. I'm going to look back there and it's going to be sparkling clean, right? <laughs> I'm excited. So, uh, so I will see you guys later. I'll be back soon. Probably, I don't know, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. I got stuff this week, so we'll do another one. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for the super chats. Y'all have a good one. Bye.